I came out of the womb kicking the clutch. So like my first, my first full build, I was nine years old. My dad and I did a frame op restoration, a solid axle swap on a 85 Toyota pickup. So I kind of like was conditioned to have to love Toyotas after that, I guess. This is a 1977 Toyota Hilux. It's got a turbocharged 5.3 liter uh, LS motor with a 4L 80E transmission sitting on 2006 Crown Vic police car front and rear suspension. Uh, it's also got a little bit of nitrous. It's about a thousand wheel horsepower, so it, it's rowdy. It's real dumb. Driving this thing is like driving a brand new car sitting on 2006 Crown Vic suspension, and it's just a dream. Like it's a little clanky and tinny because you know I don't have a full interior and all that in it, but it the damn thing is a slot car. Like on a dime, I got these 275 wide Falcon tires on it. It's a dream. Yeah, I bought this truck for 250 bucks in Phoenix. It had been abandoned in the desert for 15 years. I spent about a week trying to get it running and I just wanted to drive it back home to New Hampshire in stock form. I blew the motor up in New Mexico and I idled 120 miles down a desert dirt road to the middle of nowhere where a good 80 miles of it I didn't have cell phone service. There wasn't a barn, a car, a truck, no telephone wires. It was just flat. You could have dropped me in the middle of the ocean. I would have had the same view in every direction. I met up with a Craigslist stranger in the middle of the night. He stayed up and did a motor swap with me. It was done by like 4.30 in the morning. I continued on my trip to try to make it to New Hampshire and blew that motor up like 600 miles later. And I got a case of the mine as well syndrome. So that motor came back out and the cab came off it, the bed came off it, the rear end came out, the frame got cut in half, and next thing you know, I'm living in the fornicatorium, I'm showering a rain gutter in a Texas hurricane, and basically living on a farm, trying to piece this truck back together just so that I could make it back home to New Hampshire. What was supposed to be a two week trip actually took me three months. It definitely gives a new definition of living on the road. I lived in this truck. The motor's sticking out of the hood, the tires are 100% outside the body, and my buddy Pat goes, hey man, this thing's so wide and rowdy, it needs a turbo. Like, I'm, I, I can't, like, I'm done putting time and money, I just gotta go home, I gotta shop, that, like, I gotta go back to work. And so the next day he came over with a 70 millimeter used eBay turbo, and he's like, here, you can have it if you put it on. So I had to put the turbo on. When I first hit the road after the engine swap, I had to stop 35 times within the first 200 miles to fix or diagnose this thing. So like it took days to make it a couple hundred miles. But in doing so, I met some of the best people on the planet. Like the kindness of strangers in America is way stronger than you'd ever imagine. If you look at the world through the eyes of the media, it's a dangerous and scary place, but if you get out there and experience it on a person-to-person -person level, it's just full of regular people, love and kindness, and people who want to help. You know, we're sitting right here doing this interview, and a cop rolls up, and he wants pictures with us, and he wants to come back to see burnouts happen. I don't know what it is about this vehicle, but I sort of realized that once you go beyond ludicrous, all laws are off. Like you can get away with almost anything. I've blamed the hat for many years, but I've never had the experiences that I've had with just my hat without this truck. Like it's not, I don't, you can't describe it. You know, people ask me all the time, they're like, 
How, how often do you get pulled over? You, how many times have you been arrested? Like, I probably should have been a lot of times. Like, I, I don't know how. Like, I should be in jail a lot and not have this truck anymore. Some impound lot would be beating it in the backyard. I, I don't get it. My favorite thing is definitely the intangibles, like the relationships and friends that I've made. But if I had to pick a solid tangible thing, it would just be the raw feeling you have when you're slinging it through a corner or you get your foot all of the way on the floor and flame shoot out the pipes. Just the sensations that, that you get driving the vehicle. With, it's probably my favorite tangible thing of the vehicle. So, so uh, you know what, I guess what that means is that like, I don't give a shit about the truck. I just, I like the feelings and I like the people and like, it's all intangible. All the value is in intangibles. So I think everybody's got different reasons on why they're a car guy or gal, but I think there again, it, it goes right back to the intangibles and the feelings and the, there's an emotional connection to these chunks of iron. It's the smells, it's the vibrations, it's you feel every bump in the road. You, the experiences you have in them, you know, become an emotional connection to the vehicle. It's gained its own personality, its own story, its own life. Like, the purpose of this truck is not actually the truck, it's the people. The, the quality of build is secondary to the quality of people who have been involved in the build. I don't know how many signatures I have on it, but hundreds, everything from no-name Joes that you know just happen to have a pair of pliers at a gas station to to big wig name dropping TV stars that you know stepped up to help out. So like it's it's about people. I mean initially I put all the hours in just as a middle finger. Like it was a joke. I didn't even want this truck. Um, but after I saw what it can do to people and how many people have been inspired by the truck, the build, the, the story, like I've got a personal goal that I want to become a billionaire, but not in the sense that most would. I believe there's a new definition for billionaire and that's somebody who positively affects the lives of over a billion people and the smiles that this truck puts on people's faces, like I'm already headed down the right road. My name is Josh Maserol, and this is my 1977 Toyota Hilux.